Hey guys and welcome back to another tutorial on the channel. Today we have a really exciting video. We're going to be teaching you how you can create uh, this dispersion effect in Photoshop really easily and really quickly in about 15, maybe 20 minutes, depending on how much uh, experience you have on Photoshop. Um, now, first of all, I'm going to show you, I have gone ahead and created a Photoshop action where you have to do some of the work, but the majority of the work is done for you in creating this sort of action. And there will be probably, I'm thinking about five actions, maybe five to ten actions in this pack where all you do is do a couple of steps which I'm going to show you now and then click one button and you have this effect done. So without any further ado, let's show you how these actions work. Now in this pack you will have uh, probably, now in this pack there are a bunch of actions uh, and with each action comes uh, two images. Now this is the, the uh, dispersion one action um, and you get these two images. So this is the first one which is the add to cutout layer. Uh, and this is the second one, which is the add to liquify layer. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to first of all import our image into a file. Now, if you are interested, the file size I'm using at the moment is 5,000 pixels by height of 7,000 pixels. And I've just imported this portrait in. Uh, I've labeled the portrait woman, uh, and I'm just going to press Command J or Control J to duplicate the layer um, here. Now I'm going to turn off this top layer and come back to the bottom layer. I'm going to come up to the magic wand tool here and I'm going to select a quick selection tool. Um, firstly, you want to make sure that you select the um, subject of your image. So in this case, uh, we are selecting the woman uh, and we're just going to basically highlight as best we can um, around the edges. It doesn't need to be too accurate. Um, all we're going to be doing here is trying to remove her from the background layer. So once you've done that, you want to make sure your layer is rasterized. So control click on the layer and select rasterize layer. You can also do that for the top one, rasterize layer. Come back to your bottom layer um, and then what you're going to do is press shift delete and come down here to content aware and select. Okay, and this is the image that we um, get once we've done that. And you can see that we've roughly deleted the woman from this uh, image here. The next thing you do is come into the layer above it, click on it and do the same thing again. You want to select the woman, but this time we are uh, selecting um, a lot more accurately. We're making sure that we are keeping to the edges um, of the image uh, and we're getting in all of the parts that we want to keep. Um, bear in mind that this will be different for different photos. You want to make sure that there is a high contrast between your photo, uh, between your subject of the photo and the background. Okay, so we think we're probably done there. What we're going to do is click on Refine Edge, and we're going to get the Refine Edge tool, and we are just going to brush over the hair, and we're going to let Photoshop fix um, those bits there and just bring in the extra straggly bits of hair. Um, and you can, if you want to, spend more time. Um, making sure you get in all the bits of hair. Once you're done, click Output Selection uh, to Layer Mask and then select OK. We're going to label this layer Liquify, duplicate the layer, and we're going to label this one Cutout. OK, now what you want to do is turn off your Cutout layer, come to your Liquify layer, head up to Filter, Liquify, uh, and then all you want to do is make sure your pressure is on 100% and just simply drag out the side of the image that you want to um, disperse. Okay, so there we are. That took all of about five seconds to do. We're then going to click OK and we're going to apply this layer. And what you're going to do is come to this mask here and you're just going to press B on your keyboard or the brush tool, uh, X to make black, uh, white the foreground color, increase the brush size, and we're just going to paint in the area here. On our mask because you will remember from before down here we had the same mask as above so you won't be able to see your liquefied area okay so now you're good to go turn on all of your layers and import the images that come with the pack your photos are imported you want to make sure that all of your layers are turned on come to the top layer which says add to cutout and you're simply going to come up to your actions select the dispersion action that goes along with the images and then simply press play and wait for Photoshop to complete creating the dispersion effect and there you have it that is the dispersion effect done so you can see there are a couple of steps to do beforehand but the main bulk of the work has been completed uh, within the action but I will leave a link down below in the description the minute I get that uh, action done so you guys can go ahead and download it so depending on when you're watching this video go ahead and check down below in the description to see if you guys can see um, an action however in the meantime it would be great if you guys could subscribe to the channel and also like this video if you do enjoy this tutorial uh, I want to see more videos like this but without any further ado let's get started on today's video so I've gone ahead and I've imported the photo into Photoshop 
just straight off, this is what it looks like. Um, so I'm going to click on this lock button here. So I've got to go ahead and I've rasterized the bottom layer. If you guys don't know how to do that, you do control click and select rasterize layer. Uh, then just duplicate that by pressing command J or control J. Um, and the idea here is on the base layer, we're going to try and remove the woman and just place um, this image, if you saw, I mean the background image, so she's not there. Uh, we don't need to be too specific about it, we don't need to be too accurate the way we do it. So all I've done is I've pressed W or I've come up to the magic wand tool here um, and I've selected the quick selection tool and I'm literally just painting over where she is and her hair um, like that. Okay, so now we've got a selection. What we're going to do is make sure that this bottom layer has been duplicated beforehand and we're going to press Shift Delete and we're going to make sure the fill button up here says content aware. The idea here is that this is going to try and mimic the background and place it within this selection. So I'm going to click OK. Wait for Photoshop to do its magic and you'll see that she does disappear from this image. Uh, we will need to do some minor adjustments. So you can see if I press Command D that's what the image looks like once Photoshop has removed her. Now we don't need to be too accurate like I said about what the background looks like because if I turn this layer back on we are just going to crop out the woman in the front so there is no background uh, so she will be placed over the image if you see what I mean I'll demonstrate that better later on so I'm going to come onto my clone stamp tool come up to here put the hardness on 0% then I'm literally just going to alt click or option click on Mac where I want to duplicate from and I'm just going to paint along the edges here just to kind of remove this harsh um, outline that has been left behind from the image. And that's what we're gonna do. I'm just gonna speed this up really quickly just so you guys can get the idea um, of what I'm doing here. I'm just removing the background. I don't want any of these outlines to be in the image at all. And it doesn't matter here if I've moved the hair further in because later on, as you'll see, I will actually end up removing, you won't be able to see that because the person will still be in front of it. It's mainly the issue is these parts here. Um, I just want to get rid of those. I've done this really quickly. If you do it, I recommend you spend more time on it, but I want to get on with this tutorial. So I'm going to turn the foreground layer back on. Uh, I'm going to press W on my keyboard or come back up to here, select the quick selection tool, and I'm again just going to paint over the woman. And the idea here is we're going to be more accurate. Make sure you're on the right layer. Um, and we're going to be more accurate this time to make sure we get all of the edges in the hair the shoulders, um, specifically that button there, everything in as much as we can. Uh, and then to sort out these straggly bits of hair, we're going to do our best to save those by coming out to Refine Edge. And we're going to increase the brush size. And we're literally just going to paint over the hair. And Photoshop is going to do some magic where it decides which bits it wants to keep and which bits it wants to remove. And usually you find after a couple of passes, you get all the bits of hair back in to the image. So it's actually quite a cool little tool. And I'm just going to sort out these corner bits here of the shoulders. But otherwise, I think we're probably good to go. We don't need to be accurate again to the extreme. We just want to make sure we have those corners and sort out the straggly bits of hair. Once we're done, come to the output selection and select layer mask and then click OK. OK, so we now have the foreground layer being just the woman and the background layer is just the background with the uh, blue in the background. But you can see here, for example, I want to sort out that little bit of hair. Um, so I'm just going to use the clone selection tool and I'm just going to paint and get rid of that from the background because I don't want it there at all. Okay, so now we've done that. We're going to come onto the top layer and we're going to duplicate it again by pressing Command J on our keyboard. Uh, we're going to turn off that layer and come back to it in a minute. Come back to the layer underneath. So we're going to come up to Filter and Liquify. Uh, make sure your size is pretty large. I've got it on 500%. You can actually make it larger if you want, just to make this quicker. Um, but about 500 is probably good. Pressure on about 100%. And all we're doing is dragging out this side of the image. So we're going to have the dispersion effect like I showed you in the before photo. Or so I showed you what it's going to look like. Uh, the dispersion will be on this side of the image. Kind of like it's been blown this way. Uh, so all we're doing is stretching out the image in this direction. Um, you may want to just sort of drag it off a little bit past the central line if you want to. Uh, the idea here, I mean I'm doing this super quickly, you can spend more time on this if you want to try and make sure that you don't get these like weird bends in the straight line, so just sort of straighten it up like that if you wanted to. Um, but I'm just going to do this really quickly just to give you an idea of what you need to do. And we're just dragging it out and we're going to fill up all of this space here that's blue with the color or parts of the woman. Um, 
like this. So that's probably good enough for what we're doing today. Uh, I'm going to select OK, and you'll see it's done something weird here. Uh, that's because we still have this mask layer turned on. So if you come on to B on your keyboard or brush, um, want to select a circular brush, hardness on 0%. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to come onto the mask and you're going to paint back in this area of the image, i.e. just the liquefied part. Don't paint in this side here, just this part here. That's all you're going to need. So if I turn that off and on again, you can see what we've done there. And obviously if I put this layer, turn it back on again, which you're going to need to do is that's going to put on the woman that has not been uh, liquefied, which sounds pretty grim. Okay, so we're going to come in up here now and I'm just going to sort of sort out this corner bit here on the um, uh, on the, the hat. I'm just going to paint that back in just on the mask here. You can see what I'm doing using the brush tool. Okay, so we're good to go now. Now the next thing you want to do is make sure you have some brushes downloaded, some dispersion brushes. brushes. Um, I've got 20 dispersion brushes here, which I down I can't say brushes, uh, which I downloaded off the internet. I just typed in free dispersion brushes, brushes uh, and this is the download I've got. And you just import them into Photoshop. So the only thing you do is you download your brush file and you drop it into here. So come into Photoshop, Presets, Brushes, and drop your brush file in here. Reopen Photoshop and your brushes will be saved up here and you can load them up like this. Just select OK and you have your brushes here. Okay, so first of all, we're gonna turn uh, off the liquefied layer and we're gonna work on this top layer now. Uh, so come onto the mask uh, layer here um, select a brush, any brush will do, something that's slightly dispersed, and we're going to, oops, we're going to press uh, X on our keyboard or D on our keyboard to reset these colors to black and white, and then X to put black as our foreground color. Decrease the brush size, and we're just going to paint. So you can see here what we're doing is we are removing parts of the image um, using this dispersion brush. Now, obviously, I'm going to do this really quickly just for the sake of the tutorial. Um, you can spend more time on it. And what you want to do is just rotate your brush. So come up here uh, and rotate your brush like this, for example, just so that it doesn't look too obvious that you've used the same brush um, repetitively around the corners of your image. And obviously what you can do then is you can come here um, and you can change the brush, um, rotate the brush. And you can do some bigger ones, that's probably a bit too big. But you, can, you get the idea of what you're doing, you're just literally painting, just to kind of remove, get an idea of um, dispersion in the image. So what's kind of cool sometimes to do is just to drag the dispersion further onto the middle of the image, um, as if the dispersion passed right the way through the body. And then we can always come back in if we don't like it and paint these back in, which is why we're using mask tool. So don't worry about overdoing it, you can always come back and undo what you've done. Um, one thing I will mention is try your best to make sure these corners, these edges, the sharp lines don't show. You don't have any sharp lines on your image. Um, and if you find that actually uh, you are finding it pretty hard to remove those, um, what you can do is just come back and select the circular brush, put the hardness on zero. And all we're going to do is continue painting. We're painting black in the foreground color in the mask, and we're just going to remove, just paint to remove these edges here. We don't want to remove anything else just these harsh edges like that. Again, you can spend more time on it and do it better. If you increase your brush size, you can just literally just paint like that and very softly remove those edges. So you won't really notice them there. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that there. And we're gonna come onto this layer here, which is the uh, background um, layer. And on this one, we're going to select the brush tool uh, and we are going to come back up to these brushes, select one of these, uh, but this time we are going to try and increase the brush size quite a bit and you can see we've got black in our foreground color again but this time what we're trying to do is remove any um, trace of there being this obvious liquefied effect on the image. Um, now you can see we've got this going on here, it's hard to see with this brush but here we can see that we've actually been using um, a dispersion brush because we, if you remember earlier, we painted back in this area um, just to so we can get all the liquefied um, stretching in. But basically we're just gonna keep painting and at this point you want to aim to have smaller uh, dispersion at the closest part to the body and wider dispersion further away. So what I'm doing is increasing my brush size. Uh, I've zoomed into the image so I can get these the chunkier bits um, sort of on the outside whereas these smaller bits um, don't sort of 
touch too far into the portrait just yet. Um, so for example, change the brush size, what you can do is then just rotate it around. And you can see here, I'm just working very slowly, very gently, just trying to remove um, the further out liquefied part of the image. Uh, I'm gonna keep going ahead on this just to give you an idea so you can see what you're doing. Um, I'm gonna do this, again, like I said, I'm doing this really quickly. You wanna spend more time on this if you wanna get a realistic dispersion effect. You can also download triangle brushes and things like that so you can get sort of um, Infinity War style dispersion, um, which is probably uh, quite cool. Um, but I'm just going ahead now, and the idea is here, you can begin to see this part up here is starting to look quite good. I wanna work a little bit more on the hair, just to have a little bit less going on. Um, and I am going to rotate my brush. In fact, I'm going to change my brush around. And the key is just to keep changing your brush so you don't have any obvious repetition in brush strokes. Okay, so I think that's probably done. I don't want to spend too much more time on this. Um, now what we're going to do is we are going to select a new brush. So probably one of these, for example. Let's say that one. Decrease the brush size. Uh, and we're going to set the foreground color as white this time. And what we're going to do here is we're painting back in parts of the image. But you can see here, with the small amounts of dispersion, I want to keep um, little tiny dispersion effects. So if, like very close to the line of the image, you want to have smaller dispersion. Um, it's just technique. Eventually, you kind of get used to it. You get better at it as you do it more and more and more. Um, that Basically, what it does, it just looks more realistic after a while um, of doing it. Oops, I'll rotate the brush again and just work around the whole image like this. And then you can increase the brush size, paint more in like that. You can also then start to remove things again if you think you've done too much. Uh, and this is basically why you use the um, mask tool. So you can actually come in and change bits if you find you've done too much. But I think, to be honest, in this tutorial, we've probably done enough to show you how to do it. Um, and you can kind of see what effects we get from this. And then one thing you can do which kind of looks cool is just, to, like I said earlier, continue the brush strokes into the body a little bit more. And there you are. There we have it. That is the dispersion effect done. If I put that in full screen, you guys can see um, what it looks like. So that's the one we did in this video. Uh, like I said, I did this one beforehand. And each time you do it, you get a different look. So this one's a much less um, crazy dispersion going on, whereas this one we've got much more explosion. That's how you do it. It's a very simple thing to do. It doesn't take too long. As long as you've got the dispersion brushes, you can do it. It's um, quite a cool thing to do. But like I say, if I do get around to doing an action for this, I will leave the link to the product down below so you guys can go ahead and download it if you want. But that's it for today's tutorial, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. I will see you in the next one. Live long and prosper.